Hi guys, today we're gonna talk about funny situations which happen to us in our lives. Today we're gonna entertain you a lot. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. Okay, so Nate wants us to tell about the funny situation which happened to him. Go ahead. <laughs> you want me to start? Well, we were talking about airport stories, yes. right? You have airport stories and so it reminded me of a funny story I have from uh, Vegas. So okay. I have... Um, I had a group of buddies and we went to Vegas for a long weekend, you know, uh, just Friday through Sunday sort of deal. And we, we did it up, you know, we partied like hard. <laughs> uh, we saw Britney Spears for real. And uh, wow. yeah, yeah, we had a good time. But anyhow, at the end of this weekend, we are exhausted and we go to the airport. It's Sunday night and we're ready to you know, head home. And uh, we get there and they're like, there's, there's a problem. Gentlemen. We're like, yeah, there's a ton of problems. You know, we're hungover. This is a nightmare. <laughs> we're late. And we're like, yeah, we know we're, you know, not the full hour early or whatever, but what's the problem? And they're like, it's Monday. Okay, so? Yeah, we're like, wait, but we were supposed to leave on Sunday. <laughs> like, what do you mean Monday? They're like, it's Monday night at 8 p.m. Uh huh. We're like, how, how did we lose 24 hours in a weekend? <laughs> How is that even possible? <laughs> and so we were like, oh my God, what, what do we do? Mm -hmm. And they're like, get on the plane. It's Vegas. It happens all the time. <laughs> and they just let us fly home. Really? Yeah, even though we'd missed a full 24 hours somehow. But uh, did you have to pay uh, extra money? Nothing. Nope. Just find a seat. They are so generous. Get out of our city. We don't want to see you again for a year. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was my airport story, one of them. <laughs> Okay, my airport story is almost the same, but uh, we missed the flights, but it was not like uh, we slept uh, for 24 hours more <laughs> like Mr. Nate. <laughs> no, uh, my story was a little bit different because um, uh, we missed uh, the flight because of me. I thought that, uh, okay, we already in the airport. So the airplane cannot take off without me, you know? Me as a queen, they cannot <laughs> take off without me. So I said to my friends, I was like, you know, we just uh, will walk in the, uh, in duty free, we will walk in the airport and uh, if they start boarding, they will call us. And uh, my friends, they were like, are you sure about that? I'm like, yeah, of course I'm sure about that. So when uh, <laughs> we came to uh, that uh, gate, and uh, the lady told me, she's like, you know, your flight already departed. And I was like, how departed? And she's like, yeah, it's just because you didn't come up here. So that's it. And I was like, why they didn't uh, call us? <laughs> you know, because I was thinking that I'm so important. They have to call us. But she told me, sorry, now you just have to go again through passport control. You have to put a stamp in your passport that uh, you uh, arrived to the country and then you have to go again through passport control. You have to put a stamp that you left the country. You have to buy another ticket uh, before you go to passport control. But you know, my friends were super pissed off with me <laughs> <laughs> because it was the first time for them flying. But for me, they relied on my experience because they thought like, oh, she flew a lot. So um, we can rely on her experience. <laughs> They shouldn't have done it. <laughs> yeah, that really burned them in the end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. God, I hope no one sees this. Um, <laughs> okay, so one of my best friends was getting married in Mexico. Uh -huh. Okay. And I was working, so I barely, like, I didn't even know if I was going to be able to make it to the wedding. Flew in last minute, super last minute. <sighs> Landed in Cancun. And I didn't have a swimsuit. I didn't have any of the necessities because I had literally left work and had it out there. I think I had a suit and that's it. <laughs> so I went and bought a swimsuit, right? And it was like just a basic swimsuit. I bought some towels, I bought some sunscreen, some booze, just the necessities, you know, for the trip. And um, so it's the, the day before the wedding. It's the next day and we're, we're all getting together. And uh, we, I meet my buddies, right? And we just hop in the pool. You know, I have a couple drinks, hop in the pool, yada, yada. And then all of a sudden, the father-in-law, so my buddy's wife's dad, shows up, okay. and he's like, "Oh my gosh, guys, you know, don't get up!" And but of course, we're being very respectful, so we're all getting out of the pool. We're like, "Oh, it's it's, it's so glad to meet you," you know. Uh huh. And um, 
so I go up, I, uh, people, a couple of people say hi, I go up to him and I'm like, hey, it's so great to meet you. Uh -huh. And he looks at me kind of funny. Uh -huh. And he just laughs. Why? My swimsuit was white and it was totally see-through. <laughs> First time I had ever swam in it. <laughs> That's hilarious. So the dude's just staring at me, right? <laughs> and uh, it was bad, it was bad. He made a joke out of it. You know, he said something like, I don't know what to shake or something, but it was a problem for me. And I was horrified. And uh, yeah, but the rest of the wedding went off without a hitch and they're still very happy. He was like, exclude this guest from the list. <laughs> yeah, I think we got lucky that he was a bit of a partier himself or that oh, might have really? gone way differently. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, another story which I wanted to share with you, which happened to be when we went to south part of Ukraine. We went for the conference and uh, yeah, we were staying in the hotel and uh, <laughs> I misled my friend. <laughs> so we end up in men's toilet and <laughs> when I get out from the cabin, I realized that immediately that I'm uh, in men's toilet because <laughs> I saw the guys <laughs> standing doing their business. <laughs> But my friend, she didn't figure out that and imagine she's getting out from uh, her cabin and you know she's going to the mirror to fix herself, right? Um, obviously. Uh, I was standing there and I was waiting until she realizes that uh, she's a man in men's toilet and <laughs> after five minutes she is running out. She's like, Victoria, have you seen that we were in men's toilet? And I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, I was expecting you to get out much earlier than now. So I also use the men's room a lot when I'm waiting. It was like really very embarrassing. Okay, so um, I have also some stories about airports and about trips and travels, but now Nate will tell us some funny story. Well, first of all, when you say misled her, you gotta clarify that. You accidentally went in there and she <laughs> followed you, right? Yeah. Because when you say misled, I picture you like sneaking in there <laughs> on purpose. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is a recent travel story um, during the, the quarantine fiasco. So I'm in New York City, things are getting a little bit dicey, and I decide that I have to fly back to the Midwest. I actually had an interview, it wasn't that I'm just totally scared of living there. Mm. But I decided to fly back to the Midwest, and um, this is right when things are jumping off. So everyone's telling me you need hand sanitizer and you need a mask, right? So I'm getting ready for the travel and I don't have a ton of stuff. You know, I've got this interview in a day or two. So much like my other story, I just leave with what I have, you know, a suit, some other things, some casual clothing. And I've got like, a, have you ever seen those Mio drops? They're these drops that you, it's like a little bottle and you squeeze it into a drink, into water, and it makes it taste better. Mm. It's like zero calorie. It's great, right? You squeeze it right into a bottle or okay, right into a water. It's just a taste? Yeah. Some have vitamins and stuff, but mainly it's just for the taste. But I love them, so sponsor. <laughs> so anyhow, <Pay> yeah, <laughs> they, uh, so I um, I get on the plane and there's a lot of stuff. There's like no one on the plane, zero. I'll show, I'll send you a picture so you can post it. It's like no one on the plane, and I can't get a stewardess. But I'm like, hey, who cares? Because I've got water and I've got my meal. You know, the little squeeze bottle. So. I end up squeezing the meal in the drink and a couple minutes later I have a drink and I'm like, I seriously almost spit it out. I'm like, this is God awful. Like what happened? Meal used to be so good. So I looked down, I realized I squirt the hand sanitizer into the water, not the meal. So I drank poison. <laughs> we should do a disclaimer. Yeah. Look. I just want to make this clear. I don't know if this is going to be in the outtakes or what. I don't normally look this terrible, okay? <laughs> this is three months without a haircut, all right? Living in a basement in the Midwest. I went from a penthouse in New York City to my parents' basement, okay? I can't get a shave, can't get a haircut. Okay, I can shave myself, but it's not a great job, all right? And we've all put on the quarantine 15. So I don't want to see any comments about that guy really let himself go. Yeah, and then I'll find you. Great, now I'm going to get comments. And then people start Googling him. Oh, it's not that guy who I saw in Victoria's videos. Yeah, they're going to be like, what happened to him? Now, identity theft. Editor, put up a picture of me in my glory days, a short six months ago. Put up the one picture of me at work, like 
fake working. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, my another story is about my MacBook and uh, my iPad. I guess everybody knows how much they cost, but imagine I managed to forget them in uh, some airports on uh, the security check. Uh, my MacBook was forgotten in Istanbul and my iPad was forgotten in uh, Greece. Story about my iPad. So I was traveling from Greece to Ukraine and uh, I went through security check and uh, when they asked us uh, to check again before you uh, get on the plane, I just I checked and I was like, where's my iPad? iPad, 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 where's iPad? <laughs> and then, you know, I just I was like, oh my God, it's uh, on security check as just you uh, pass the borders. And I was like, I want to get back. And they were like, you know, if you go back, you won't be able to join this flight. So you will stay in Greece and then you will have to buy another air ticket and travel to Ukraine. And uh, then I was like, okay, what to do? To buy another ticket and travel to Ukraine for 300 euro or iPad for 1000 euro. But uh, I had some friends in Greece, so I asked them to go to the airport and collect that. Uh, it's just I landed in Ukraine. I called uh, Greece and uh, to the airport and I told them, I was like, guys, did you find my iPad? And they were like, yeah, we found it. So they asked me to give them my password. So they checked. Yes, it was my password. But I asked one of my friends to go there and collect it. My MacBook, the situation was a little bit tougher because uh, I also <laughs> I forgot it on security check, but I was uh, running on my flight and um, uh, I was in the rush and uh, I just like packed everything uh, uh, in my bags and I forgot about my MacBook <laughs> and I ran to passport control. I passed through passport control. I put a stamp that I already left Turkey and I had to fly to Dubai uh, the same day and uh, the flight supposed to be at 8 p.m. in the evening and I supposed to land in Dubai at 3 a.m. in the evening and in my contract it was written that uh, if you don't show up at work you're gonna lose your contract and uh, you're gonna get fined I was like what to do so I asked the guys like uh, the passport control guys uh, I was like please please let me go and collect my uh, uh, MacBook they were like no you cannot I was like, are you serious? I was like, it's a $1,500 laptop. They were like, no, you cannot. So uh, I started to cry. And uh, nobody paid attention. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, my MacBook. But uh, one guy, he was like, okay, okay. He was like, give me your passport because I already had a stamp that I left Turkey. He was like, give me, my, uh, give me your passport and just run to uh, security check. Collect your uh, MacBook and run here. So I just was like, ah, yes, I need to get my MacBook. So uh, I just I reached there. Of course, they would never give you a MacBook. So they were like, okay, here is the MacBook. You have to put the password and um, then we want to see that it's exactly your uh, laptop. Despite there was my picture. They were like, no, we want to see that you are exactly the owner of this MacBook. So they checked that the password was accepted and I ran back. Never do that. You know, my advice, when you go to the airport and you go through security check, just count your things. Really big sunglasses. White corn. Small mouth bass. Wow. Rolling pin. Ah, ah. Yeah. Even if they tell you, remove the shoes, remove the, the case for the laptop, uh, for, they ask you to do all the stuff. Like sometimes they ask me to remove my camera and just uh, dismantle it, uh, like uh, remo remove uh, uh, the lens. It happens rarely, but it happens in some airports. So uh, when you do that, you always have to count. I always uh, do mistake in that. After that situation, I don't do any more such mistakes. <laughs> but my advice to you, just always count your stuff uh, when you go through security check. Because you know, like sometimes it happens when you go through security check and there are some other people who just put their stuff, so they are mixed and you don't see your stuff. And you know, it happens, you know, the person is collecting his or her stuff and you know they can collect your stuff by mistake so always count yeah 
I, uh, my advice to you is to tie a string to everything you own <laughs> and then tie it around one of your limbs so that you don't lose, you lose stuff everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> shit happens. <laughs> That's a good philosophy to have, actually. I'm a girl. <laughs> I had a, uh, this is a terrifying story that I just thought of, which is uh, I was in Europe once and I went to Europe with this beautiful girl that I really didn't know that well. And uh, on the way back, she asked me, she said, hey, do you have an extra carry-on? And I said, yeah, I have an extra carry-on. I don't care. I'll take a carry-on or whatever. And uh, the day comes where she's flying off to Spain to party and I'm flying back to go to work. And she gives me, she doesn't give me a carry-on bag. She hands me like a four by four suitcase that weighed a hundred pounds. I remember that. <laughs> it cost me like a hundred plus dollars to get home. I was not thrilled, but anyhow, as I get this suitcase, I'm at the airport, you know, when she hands it to me and I'm like, I'm already not feeling great about this because what the first thing I hear in the airport is do not take anyone else's bags on the thing. And it's like, wait a minute, am I getting set up to go down for something huge? I'm like, no, I'm being crazy. I've known her for you know several months and, and friends in common and stuff. So I'm like, I'm just over, I'm imagining things. Um, then when we get to the place where you go through with the passports, she's like, oh, just give me a second. I'm going to use the bathroom. I'll just meet you on the other side, which is totally not a big deal. But in my head now, I'm, on, I'm paranoid. <laughs> I'm like, she's smuggling heroin. I'm going to go to prison in Lisbon for the rest of my life, you know? Yeah. But it's too late. I'm in too deep. Like, I'm actually like texting my friends narratives in case I do get arrested. Like, just so you know, this girl, here's her name, gave me a suitcase, you know, whatever. <laughs> So I fly back and I kind of forget about it because everything's fine, you know? And I get to New York and we're coming back through, it's two in the morning. And of course, it's just smooth, wide open, I'm home free. And as I'm rounding the corner, freaking guy with a radio is like, sir, come with me. And I'm like, <sighs> I mean, that's the moment where it's over, you know? I've seen locked up abroad, you know? And it's probably worse to be locked up in Yonkers in New York City than it is to be abroad. So I'm like, all right, well, my life's over. You know, I'm getting ready to just text my parents like, hey, I love you guys. Sorry. Look, this is a mix up. I know you're not gonna believe me, but I had nothing. And they bring me this room and it's got this giant conveyor belt that goes uphill. It's very like old school actually, you know, like, like something out of the 1970s or a steampunk novel, just giant monstrosity. They throw that her bag on it. And I'm like, they don't even look at my bag. And I got all kinds of weird stuff in there, but they don't care because it's all legal. <laughs> and so it goes up the conveyor belt and they're like, we need to open this. And I'm like, I'm getting ready to tell them. It, it, look, it's not even my bag. <laughs> but I'm like, just wait, you know? <laughs> so they open up the bag and they're like, sir, why do you have this? And they pull out a bunch of fruit. <laughs> because it's apparently you're not supposed to import fruit from other countries. Yeah, exactly. And I was just so relieved. I'm like, you know, I'm an idiot. <laughs> you know, I just, I love fruit. I'm a fruit guy, you know? You never had a hankering for a mango? <laughs> and they obviously let me go. They kept the fruit. And uh, was I, it mango? I have no idea. I mean, let's for the story. Hell yeah, it was mango. Really? No, no, it wasn't. I have no idea what fruit it was. I know that uh, there are some different fruits which are not allowed. You're not allowed to carry them on the plane and out of the country. There are like certain fruits. Certain. Well, I think we hit every one of those certain fruits because they were pretty. <laughs> They were pretty adamant that we get... Such a smart girl. She didn't want to be in trouble. She wanted you to be in trouble. Yeah, she's a smart girl, not for that reason, because she got me to float the $150 baggage fee <laughs> on the way home. Yeah, that's a that's a whole nother story, but um, what can you do? <laughs> yeah. I had a great trip in Europe, you know, right? <laughs> for $100 extra. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's the tip of the iceberg, but <laughs> we won't get into that. Yeah. Okay, my uh, last um, story, which I wanted to tell you, and don't do it like me. <laughs> uh, you know, I traveled to Italy. It was my dream to go to Italy. Uh, I flew to Venice. I landed in Venice. And, uh, you know, when I got out uh, in that uh, small island, because uh, you land in the airport, which is aka called uh, Venice Airport, but it's not, it's still in the city. But to go to Venice, you just have to take a boat. So I took a boat and imagine, I was traveling for 
uh, I guess uh, six hours or something like that, but a long distance, yeah? And uh, I'm landing uh, in the airport at five o'clock. So uh, I got to Venice at uh, 7 p.m. It's getting dark. I'm alone. And internet is not working. And I had uh, internet from uh, Dubai. It was in Roman and it's not working. I got paranoid. And uh, if you didn't go to Venice, you just have to understand that this situation is just, uh, uh, you know, like you don't know anybody. Venice is located uh, in, uh, in the sea and uh, all the buildings, uh, they are on the sea. And I was just like, oh my God, what should I do? What should I do? And I was like, stop panicking, stop panicking. And I got really paranoid and I was like, Okay, I need to find people, find people. And I was like, you know, I'm so afraid. I was like, uh, you know, I just, I cannot connect to internet. I cannot tell people that uh, I'm uh, already here in Italy. And they were like, calm down. It's just the internet. Yes, we're gonna share with you our internet. And then I sent message to my friends. I was like, you know, I'm safe. But it was like, internet is not working and uh, I can't find my hotel. And I was like, that's it. I'm just gonna die here. And nobody even will know that I was here. Because, you know, uh, they don't have much light and uh, it's just you know concrete that's it and water and canals yeah so it's like it's not like a normal city where you can at least run down the street mm -hmm. there what do you do you just fall in the water you're yeah. out of luck yeah exactly and the water is stinky and smelly so I just I was like okay I will never ever travel to Venice by myself <laughs> yeah it is I'm already sunburned now I'm gonna be double sunburned <laughs> so this is another uh, travel story since that's the theme it makes sense uh, I was in Lisbon, Portugal, as I already mentioned, uh, one stop through Europe, and it was, right away, it was one of the most beautiful cities I've seen, and I was just like, this is great, you know, and I got to my Airbnb, which I had just kind of scooped up, cheap, and everything's beautiful, it's incredible, they let me in, everything's wonderful, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to take a shower, and I'm going to, like, get ready for the night and go explore, and I go to my, to the bathroom, and the entire wall is a window. Not like waist high window, floor <laughs> to ceiling window, right? Overlooking Lisbon. Uh -huh. And I'm like, there's no way this- No curtains? None, none. <laughs> and there's none around. I was thinking about like taping up a towel, but it wouldn't work. <laughs> and the shower was like this futuristic shower. It just was a disaster. So I called the guy. He got me the Airbnb and I go, hey, there's obviously a way to like tint these windows or like a shutter. What do I do? He's like, it's no shutter. There's no way to tint the windows. <laughs> and I go, well, what should I do? And he goes, just shower. Because <laughs> everyone, everyone in Lisbon just showers naked. I'm like, that can't be true. But Oh my God. So I like worked up the courage. It was a nightmare for me, you know, having, because it's not like I'm that much of a square, but the entire city skyline is staring at me. Right? And I'm seeing people like put laundry out and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, this is not good. Finally work up the courage, take a two minute long shower. Just hop in, hop out. And I'm like, this is, I'm never gonna get used to this, right? <laughs> Cut to one week later, I'm just taking hour long showers in the middle of the day, just totally normalized, you know? <laughs> and then the neighbors <laughs> would call you, hey, uh, who is that sexy guy? <laughs> uh, I don't think that's what they were saying. Yeah? Yeah, I think they were saying, who's that fat American? Can we please <laughs> get him a towel? <laughs> so sorry, Lisbon. I loved Lisbon. I wish I remember the name of that bar I went to. That was like my favorite place on earth. Some vegan bar. It was very weird, yeah, but I like it. Some other situations uh, from that bar. <laughs> um, no, you know, I think I sat down at a random table and people were speaking Portuguese and I made some comment in English and they just like took me in as their own, you know? And I remember at one point I realized that I was being the complete stereotypical American. <laughs> like I was being loud, I was spilling drinks, but buying <laughs> drinks for people. I was like putting my arm around people, like way too friendly. This is like, and- They were like, we love America. No, they, I was, they were kind of making some jokes about uh, me, but it was, yeah, it was great. You know, I had such a, <laughs> such a good time. Okay, guys, thank you for watching our video. If you also have some funny situation uh, which you were in, 
you can write it down in the comment section below and uh, if you liked our video give us some likes and don't forget to subscribe to my channel uh, if you want to talk to Nate we're gonna add his Instagram over here <laughs> so you can uh, drop him a message and uh, uh, you can keep in contact uh, with us and uh, we are really happy that you listen to our interesting talks.